Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh, and in this final video on model selection, we are going to look at how we can visualize how the model performs while po while doing the cross validation. So here is a list of items that we'll cover. We'll look at what bias and variance is, and then we'll look at how validation curve and learning curve can help us visualize how the training is going on so probably familiar with these terms by now high bias and high variance what does it mean on the left hand side we have this particular plot where the red the orange line that is the actual function which is shown below which is a cosine function and then uh, these blue dots are the data points around that particular function so what we are trying to do is fit a line to these blue dots that should come as close as possible to this orange line so in this very first case we are fitting a polynomial of degree one so that's just a straight line and we can see that it does not do a good job of fitting to the blue data points and thus it's nowhere close to the orange line that we have and this is a case of high bias on the flip side if you look at the uh, rightmost plot where we have the same data however in this case the model that we have fit is a 15 degree polynomial and we can see it that it fits the blue data points pretty good but then it is nowhere close to the orange line and we can see this uh, we can see that the line is trying very hard to fit through the data points and that's a case of high variance or overfitting and between these two so if we balance high, if we find a middle ground between bias and variance this is what we would expect to see where we have the orange line again as we had before and now the blue line fits the data such that it is pretty close to the orange line and that's what we are aiming for when we are performing the validation so if it's a two-dimensional case then we can see the visualizations are shown in these plots but what happens if we have more than two dimensions more than x and y how do we then visualize if the data is overfitting or underfitting and the ways to do that is by using validation and learning curve so here we have on the left hand side of validation curve the classifier is svm and what validation curves can be used for is uh, we can change one hyperparameter and then see how the score varies so here we have the parameter gamma that we are varying on the x-axis and accordingly we can visualize how the score varies so as you can see down here as the orange line is the training score and the blue line is the cross validation score so as the value of the parameter gamma continues to increase we can see that the cross validation score is uh, along is pretty close to what the training score is however beyond a certain value of gamma uh, this validation score starts to drop and that tells us that we need to be somewhere in this region to get as high score as possible on the validation set and values greater than this are not uh, not any good to generalize the model so what's happening in this part of the uh, curve is that the the training score is increasing and it's probably because the model is overfitting on the trained data and it is therefore not able to generalize well on the validation set and therefore the 
uh, accuracy or the score is dropping considerably and here we have this table that shows the scenario where a low training score and a low validation score such as shown here is probably a sign of underfitting a high validation high training score and a low validation score such as shown on the right side of this curve is a case of overfitting and won't see a case where the training score is low and the validation score is high so that's uh, not possible and that's according to the docs now the implementation to get the values to plot using for a validation curve can be uh, by this particular method we have validation underscore curve and so there is a typo here this should be validation curve and we can pass in the classifier the data x and uh, features and the target then we have these parameters that we can set we can specify the number of uh, cv holds and thus in the output we get the train scores and the validation scores. so those we can plot as shown here and this plot is from the doc so if you look at the code you could play with different classifiers on your model and see how that how the plots look like now moving on let's look at learning curves so what learning curves again help us do is find out how the training and validation scores are doing how the model is doing and this is by looking at adding more data or adding more training samples to the training passes uh, here we have two plots the one on the left is the naive base uh, classifier and on the right hand side we have support vector machine now in these two plots we can see on the left hand side as the number of samples uh, are added as the number of samples on which the training is done increases the training score starts to drop and the validation score tries, uh, starts to increase and they converge at a, a score of around 0 0.85 and whereas on the right hand side we have a case where as we increase the number of training examples the training score does not drop as much as we saw on the leftmost part and while that is the case the validation score does seem does increase continue to increase and that's a sign where uh, if you that's a sign where you can add more data to the train set to uh, increase the accuracy of the model whereas on the left hand side uh, adding more data to the training is probably not going to help and here down below we have the implementation we have the train sizes train score validation scores and then we have the learning curve function so we have a classifier and then we have the data and then the sizes that are specified here and that's the c uh, number of cv folds so that's how you can use validation curve and learning curve to visualize how the train and validation sets are how the model is performing on the train set and the validation set during the training process and it 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 can be also used to of visualize how a parameter hyperparameter can influence the score of a particular model as we saw in this particular part so that was it for this video and uh, this completes the model selection part of uh, the scikit-learn i hope in this video you got uh, plenty of information on how to uh, how to quantify how to evaluate models how to perform validation cross grid search ev and also uh, how to use different types of metrics that are available for 
classification, clustering, and regression. We'll continue the discussion in scikit-learn in a new topic from the next video. Uh, by now, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comment section below. I hope to see you all in the next video as well. Thank you for your support.